The Wasson Selection Task is a task that consists of four two-sided cards. Each card is going to have a number written on one side, which will be red, and a letter written on the other side, which will be blue. Let's suppose we're looking at the four cards here, as shown, with two blue sides and two red sides, showing D, 3, A, and 2. Then let's consider a proposition about this set of cards. The proposition is that if a card has an even number on one side, then it will have a vowel on the other side. If we're allowed to verify this statement by only turning over two cards, which two cards should we turn over? Pause the video and think about this for a bit. To understand the Wasson selection task, let's first investigate the conditional logical connective. Recall that we define logical connectives in terms of their truth table. The conditional connective, read P implies Q, is only false when P is true and Q is false. So the truth table looks like this. Again, we have two columns, one for P and Q, and another column for the connective, and then four rows for each of the four situations. We then look at true implies true, true implies false, false implies true, and false implies false. According to the definition, the only one of these that is false is in row two, where we have true implies false. So this is the truth table for the conditional connective. When we write P implies Q, we call P the hypothesis and Q the conclusion of the conditional statement. There are many different ways to read the conditional connective, so here are a few. When we say P implies Q, we can read it as if P, then Q, or we can read it as P only if Q. Note that this has if Q, but the word only happens first. We can say that P is a sufficient condition for Q, or we can say that Q is a necessary condition for P, meaning Q must happen once P happens. And finally, we can always just say P implies Q. As soon as we know P, we must know Q. Let's look at a few examples where we try to write a proposition of the form P implies Q without changing its meaning. The first one we will look at is for a function to be continuous, it is sufficient that it is differentiable. The second one is an integer is divisible by 8 only if it is divisible by 4. The third one is a function is rational if it is a polynomial. And the final one is the sequence a sub n converging to 0 is necessary for the series a sub n to converge. Pause the video and think about these for a bit. Did you do it? In the first one, we note that it is if the function is differentiable, then it is continuous. The second one, the hypothesis is if the integer is divisible by 8, and the conclusion is it is divisible by 4. In the third one, the hypothesis is that the function is a polynomial, and the conclusion is it's rational. And in the fourth one, we determine that if the series converges, then the sequence must converge to 0. Note that all of these propositions are true as they've been written. Now that we know the conditional connective, we can investigate some equivalences and some propositions that are not equivalent to the conditional. Recall that we say two molecular propositions R and S are equivalent provided R is true exactly when S is true, that is when R and S have the same truth table. Let's determine if any of the following are equivalent to the conditional P implies Q. The ones we'll think about are P implies Q itself, Q implies P, not Q implies not P, and not P or Q. Pause the video and try to fill out these truth tables on your own now that we know the conditional connective. You can use the newly learned truth table for implies to rewrite P implies Q as TFTT. And then we can use it to see that Q implies P has TTFT, and not Q implies not P is TFTT, and not P or Q is TFTT. -T. Inspection of these four truth tables show that the first, the third, and the fourth are all identical. So these three propositions are equivalent. In particular, P implies Q is equivalent to not Q implies not P. This is known as the contrapositive law. 
P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q, and this is known as the conditional law. And finally, we see that P implies Q is actually not equivalent to Q implies P. A conditional is not equivalent to what's called its converse. Let's review these three things. The conditional P implies Q is equivalent to its contrapositive, which is not Q implies not P. The conditional P implies Q is equivalent to the disjunction, not P or Q. But the conditional P implies Q is not equivalent to what is called its converse, which is Q implies P. The first one is known as the contrapositive law. The second one is known as the conditional law. And the third one says that there is no converse law. Let's investigate this new terminology with the proposition, if a dog is older than 10, then it is older than seven, which is true. The contrapositive of this proposition says that if a dog is not older than seven, then it is not older than 10. We see that this is equivalent to the original and it is also true. On the other hand, the converse of the proposition says that if a dog is older than seven, then it is older than 10. We can see that this is false, actually, because the dog may be eight years old. And finally, the conditional law says that this would be stated, a dog is not older than 10 or it is older than seven. It's hard to see this as the same, but this is equivalent and it is true because a dog is either older than 10 or it's not. And if it's older than 10, then it's older than seven. Try to do this same thing with this exercise. If a number is even, it is divisible by two. Write the contrapositive, the converse, and write this in terms of the conditional law. We can use the conditional connective to introduce a fifth logical connective known as the biconditional. The biconditional connective is true exactly when the connected propositions P and Q have the same truth values. So let's fill out the truth table for the biconditional. We have a column for P and a column for Q and a column for the connective. There are four rows corresponding to the four different truth situations for P and Q together. According to the rule, true and true together return true because they're the same, but true and false together and false and true together return false because they're different, whereas false and false together returns true because they're the same. So this is the truth table for the biconditional connective. We read the biconditional by saying P if and only if Q. That means that we have if P then Q and if Q then P. So we see that P implies Q and Q implies P is equivalent to the biconditional. This is known as the biconditional law. Let's use our knowledge of the conditional connective to revisit the Wasson selection task. Recall that the Wasson selection task presents us with four two-sided cards. Each card has a number written on the red side and a letter written on the blue side. Suppose we're looking at four cards and we can see D, 3, A, and 2 face up. Our task is to figure out if the following proposition is true by turning over two cards. And the proposition is if a card has an even number, then it has a vowel on the other side. We can interpret this proposition shorthand as even implies vowel, and then take that proposition and consider each card separately. For instance, the first card has a D. This means, since it's not a vowel, that the conclusion of the conditional is false. The second card has a three, so the hypothesis of the conditional is false. The third card has an A, so the conclusion is true. And the fourth card has a two, so that the hypothesis is true. But notice that the second and third card have true truth values, regardless of what the other side of the card is. Therefore, we need to turn over the first and the fourth card to figure out if we have a true implies false situation, which is the only way the conditional connective is false. 
Therefore, we should turn over the cards with a D and a 2 because the other two are irrelevant. Let's end with one last knights and knave problem, whose solution depends on the conditional connectives. Recall that knights and knaves problem rely on a special island where there are two types of people. Knights always tell the truth and knaves always lie. Suppose we encounter two islanders and they say the following. The first islander says nothing but the second islander looks at us and says, if the other one is a knight, then I am a knave. What can we say about these two islanders? Can you figure out if they're knights or knaves? Moreover, can you see how to use the conditional connective? And can you figure out how to use the biconditional connective to simplify something that we did in the first video about logic and knights and knaves puzzles?